Hello, it's Matt Chapman, and uh, I'm here with Martin Lees, who is a HR business partner of people operations for Block One in Hong Kong. Hello, Martin. Hey, Matt. Great to see you. Good to see your smiley face as well. Um, so Block One, for those um, around the world that don't know Block One, tell us a little bit more about the company. Sure, yeah. So Block One has been in its current stage since about 2017. Uh, we are a software publishing uh, business, uh, specifically around blockchain technology. Um, so we have grown up in the cryptocurrency age, and we own a cryptocurrency by the name of EOS, EOS. but our um, business model is really to develop software and applications that work on blockchain technology, and that's uh, yeah, our major thrust and business model at this present time. Well, you're a very interesting person to talk to uh, in terms of a new age company. I mean, young, young company started in 2017. Um, how do you think that's positioned you uh, as an organization to handle um, 2020? Yeah, look, I mean, great question. And, and a couple of ways that we've been able to handle it. I mean, one, we've got a relatively young and therefore a resilient workforce. Um, I'd say, well, I won't say, but, uh, you know, over 50% of our um, employee population are millennials of one description or another, um, who are used to working in more agile, more flexible ways. Um, because we don't have a lot of legacy in this company and therefore legacy platforms and a lot of investment plowed into infrastructure, we made the decision early on to, um, to be very flexible. All of our applications are cloud-based. We work off laptops. Uh, it's not a hot desk situation. Everyone has a designated desk, but we encourage people to be flexible at all times. Um, and, and that's just part of the DNA of the organization. So we've been able to send people home when necessary. People have the choice to work from home if necessary. And as an example, our US workforce has been out since really the beginning of the year and not back in, in the offices that we do have in the US. And we've been able to main, maintain continuity, communications. It's not BAU as you normally would think about it, but actually people are resilient and adaptable. And, and through the use of our platforms and technology, through the use of the management people we have and, and really the workforce, we've been able to overcome a lot of the issues. Not to say that we're free of issues, but I think we've been able to overcome and adapt and work around a lot. Issues. And Martin, how have you been able to measure the success of that and keep on top of the, the pulse of the organization, which I'm sure is, has been pretty volatile, like everywhere, and everyone's been grappling with the same thing, but how have you done it? Yeah, yeah. Um, so we, we did struggle at first, right? So we assumed like a lot of people, you know, based, I think, in Asia, especially in Hong Kong, right, having had the, the SARS example, that this was a Asia-only issue, uh, maybe even just North Asia issue as SARS was, and it would be gone by you know three or four months after the, the first inception. But it, but obviously that was all that that thinking was incorrect, right? So we were very short term. We just pushed people back to working from home and didn't really think about you know gauging people's reaction and how how they were thinking and what they were, what they were you know worried about or, or um, you know what their thoughts were for the future. What we've done, Matt, is quickly kind of pivoted on that, and because we have. A relatively young workforce who like to be engaged, right? Millennials, for the most part, do like to be engaged and like to be, you know, part of um, part of working groups and, and part of uh, finding the pulse of an organization. So we really just harness that and we said, listen, you know, why don't we form, you know, little mini sub working groups? Give you guys some um, ownership of this. Um, let me make the, the direction on what we want to find out from the organization and how people are feeling. Uh, because you're probably best place to really ask the right questions for the majority of the workforce. So we formed kind of small working groups that were diverse in nature in terms of male, female, in terms of some age diversity, but really allowed the more junior parts of the organization to drive what we wanted to, to find out and how we wanted to tackle and, and um, deal with the challenges that we were facing. And that's been, I think, probably successful because we really got to the heart of some of the issues. We haven't been able to solve everything, but I think we've been able to uncover some problems that maybe bigger organizations haven't been as, as quick to discover. So something I'm very interested in, I'm sure you are as well, um, being in the company you're in, uh, is um, you know really trying to predict the future and just looking at the way we're going to work and the way uh, we're going to organize ourselves as as as, as companies and um, you know around the, the the trends of HR. So seeing where you sit, what do you see sort of the near future um, being? And I guess I'm asking this question at a time where we've had a lot of volatility, a lot of change this year, possibly a bit of fatigue at the moment of people, um, you know, being a bit uncertain about what, what comes next. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I was a firm believer, and you know my background, Matt, right, a long time in, in institutions, right? I was a firm believer being on that side of the fence that 
you know, the future was, you know, remote working, working from home, working for everywhere you want, you know, uh, the, the ability to, you know, work in the night if you wanted to, whatever it was, that was my firm belief. That was the future of work. I've come to change my mind over this last course of the year, but not in a, in a dramatic way. Right? I'm not advocating the fact that the future of work is all in offices. I think, I think the answer is somewhere in the middle, right? And I think, I think the key point around all of this is flexibility. And there's two things that have really st stood out to me as, a, as an HR person. One is the ability for people to ask for flexibility in work without the guilt of having to ask. And the second point is being able to be flexible in their work without having to feel peer pressure about are they really working when they're not here. And I think those are two key points that kind of drive what we're looking at here. And that is, you know, if you don't want to be in today and you've got a good reason for doing so, you want to be out for a couple of days and work remotely, that's absolutely fine. Um, you know, as long as you obviously are working and that's part of the challenge is, you know, is, is how do you check in, how do you measure uh, progress and performance and how do you measure commitment? But those are all things that can be achieved. And I think that's really the answer. So, um, you know, whether that's cross-border or whether that's within a location, that's, I think that's a harder question, right? As, you know, we've been debating this point as well. Globalization is a really interesting thing and obviously gaining momentum. But at the same time, with COVID, you're seeing governments actually retract back within their own borders. And that will have an impact on flexibility and globalization as well, you know, within the within workforces, not just across businesses and economies. So it really is finding that balance. And I think the big challenge for HR professionals is, you know, what works for the culture? Is it, is it a case of changing culture to adapt to future models of work? And what is it that people really want? Because I think if you dig down into it, I don't think HR yet really knows what people uh, want to have for the future. And how do you balance that on the commercial aspects with your management team as well? So these are the big questions I think that, that need to be asked and answered. Special to spend time with you, Martin. Thanks for your insights. Thanks, Matt. Always good to see you.